Hello again, welcome to the last lesson of class one. And it's time to talk about big data. Everyone's talking about, about big data. I've heard people say it's like teenage sex. Everyone talks about it, but no one's actually doing it. Those people probably didn't have teenage children. Anyway, uh, different people mean different things by big data. And what I mean by big data is data sets that can't fit into the Weka Explorer because the Explorer loads the entire data set. When you load a data set, it's all got to fit into main memory. So how much can it handle? Well, roughly speaking, a million instances with 25 attributes in the default configuration. Actually, if you go to the Explorer and right click on status, you can get memory information. And this gives three figures here. The last figure is the total amount of memory that is allocated to Weka, which is actually a gigabyte. That's the default configuration. The other two figures, well, it's a little bit complicated. The most important thing is the difference between these two figures. If you want to find out more, then you should uh, look up the Java functions, uh, free memory and total memory. Although Weka initializes itself with a gigabyte of memory, on my computer there's more. In fact, if I look on my computer, if I right click on computer here, I can get properties and the properties will show me that I've got eight gigs of memory. So I could in fact arrange for Weka to initialize itself with more main memory. But I'm not going to do that now. Uh, I'm going to try and break it. Let's see what happens when you break Weka. Well, we could do this by downloading a large data set, and that's uh, actually what you're going to do in the activity after this lesson. But I'm going to introduce you to Weka's data generator instead. So on the uh, pre-process panel, uh, there is a generate button, and that will generate random data according to particular patterns. So I'm going to use the LED24 data and show it and generate it. And what this has generated is a data set with 100 instances of the LED data, which has got 25 attributes. And there they are, the 100 instances. That's what's loaded in. But I can easily generate more than the default 100 instances. Let's generate 100,000 instances by uh, just adding a three zeros to this. Generate that. And uh, now it's generated 100,000 instances. So let's go and classify this. We could uh, choose, say, J48. And I'm going to use percentage split here. Cross validation would take a long time. And J48 is working away. It's finished now, and it's come up with. Uh, the percentage accuracy, where's the percentage accuracy? Ah, oh, here we go, 73% 73, 73 accuracy. Or we could use um, Naive Bayes, which I think will be a little bit quicker. And that comes up with an accuracy of 74% accuracy. OK, well, let's go and generate a million instances then with a data generator. We've got uh, 100,000, so there's a million. We can generate that. It'll take a few seconds. There's a million instances, and we can go and classify that with uh, Naive Bayes. And after a few seconds, I get the result. Here we go, 74% again. Now I could uh, try this with J48, but I happen to know that J48 uses more memory than Naive Bayes, and it will crash on this data set. And as things get bigger, the Explorer starts to crash. Actually, I could go and try and generate, say, 2 million instances of this data set, and uh, the Explorer would crash if I did that. When you're doing this kind of thing, it, you're better off using the console version of the Explorer. If you go to your All Programs menu, 
you find that uh, there's a couple of versions of Weka that are installed for you automatically, and one is Weka with console. And that brings up this console window, and it's the console window that reports uh, when things crash, out of mem memory errors, and so on. So if you were going to mess around with this kind of thing, I'd recommend using that version of Weka. Okay. Oh, this is the error message that you ought to get when uh, Weka crashes, J48 crashes. Now, unfortunately, when things break, they tend to break in different ways on different computers. So you might not, in fact, get this error message. You might uh, see that Weka just goes into an infinite loop and waits forever. It depends. That's why the console version is a better thing to use. To go further, first of all, we mustn't use the Explorer because it loads the entire data set in. And secondly, we need to use updatable classifiers. These are incremental classification models that process a single instance at a time. They don't load the whole data set into memory. Uh, and there's a few of them. Uh, in fact, uh, we looked at them in the activity associated with the last lesson. The one we're going to use is Naive Bayes Updatable, which is just like Naive Bayes, but an updatable implementation. Uh, IBK is uh, also an increment, an updatable classifier, and there's a few others. So, how much data can the Weka handle? Well, if you use the simple command line interface and updatable classifiers, then it's unlimited. So, let's open up the simple command line interface. Here it is. And I'm going to create a huge data set. Well, actually, I'm going to create a pretty small data set here with 100,000 instances in. I'm going to run the data generator, the LED24 data generator, 100,000 instances, and put that in this file here. And that has created now that uh, data set, 100,000 instances, which I'm going to use as a test file. Now for a training file, I'm going to use 10 million instances. So I could change this to 10 million and put this in the training file. That would just uh, take a few minutes, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I've prepared these files in advance. Let me just show you. Here we've got the test.arf. The test file is, uh, what is that, half a meg with uh, 100,000 instances. The training file is half a gig with 10 million instances. And I've done a really big training file here, which is, um, which is 5 gigs. 5 gigabytes with 100 million instances. So those are the files I'm going to use. And then I just need to uh, run the Naive Bayes Updatable classifier with the training file. This is a very large training file. And this is the much smaller test file. And if I run that by typing Enter here, It'll take four minutes and produce 74% uh, uh, accuracy with Naive Bayes, Naive Bayes Updatable. I can't do it with J48 because that's not an updatable classifier. But I can try it with a really big file, with any size file. So if I were to use my 5 gigabyte training file with 100 million examples in it, then uh, it would run. It takes about 40 minutes on my computer. So there you have it. The Explorer can handle about a million instances with 25 attributes, say. It depends. You can increase the amount of memory allocated to the Explorer if your computer has, has got more than one gigabyte of main memory. We haven't talked about how to do that, but it's not difficult. The simple command line interface works incrementally wherever it can. It doesn't load the data set in to main memory the way the Explorer does. So if you use updatable classifier implementations, and you can find which ones are updatable using the Java doc, uh, then the simple command line interface will work incrementally. And then you can work with arbitrarily large files, many gigabytes or hundreds of gigabytes. However, you shouldn't use cross-validation. If you were to specify cross-validation in the simple command line interface, then it would have to load the file all in at once. So the command line interface only 
doesn't load the file in if you're not using cross-validation. That's why we should use an explicit test file instead of the default of cross-validation. Working with big data can be difficult and quite frustrating. And uh, you will find that out if you do the activity associated with this lesson. Uh, good luck with that, and we'll see you in class two. Bye for now.